بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continue on in our uh, study of عمدة uh, أحكام the book of Tahara the book of purification we reach the hadith of Umar and in this hadith this is also related and very important for us to reflect on this uh, in relation to the habits or the manners to observe when we are uh, using the restroom and the hadith we mentioned the hadith of Abi Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu ta'ala anhu previously prior to this uh, lesson or hadith we mentioned that it is prohibited to face the Kaaba or turn our backs towards it when we're using the restroom let's listen to this hadith which on the Zahir it tends to it seems to uh, contradict that so now we have to learn we're going to learn a very valuable lesson on how the ulama how they make tawfiq or how they make a uh, when they look at two hadith that appear to contradict one another how they uh, use those two uh, evidences and they're able to uh, to make a hukum or a ruling which uh, we practice and benefit from an abdullah ibn amr uh, an abdullah ibn umar uh, bin al khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qala rakaytu yawman ala bayt hafsa faraaytu nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqdi hajatuhu mustaqbal al sham wa mustadbir mustadbir al ka'ba rawahu bukhari wa muslim in this hadith of Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu that he said uh, that he went to the Bayt of Hafsa And he saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was going to use the restroom. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was facing Sham, meaning the Syria and those places like Syria and Iraq and so forth, in that direction. Uh, and he was had his back towards the Qibla, towards the Kaaba. This hadith appears to be the opposite of what we just uh, mentioned in the other hadith, the hadith of Abi Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu ta'ala anhu where we said that it is impermissible to face the uh, Kaaba or turn our back towards the Kaaba when we're using the restroom. In this hadith we have the fi'l of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he alayhi salatu was salam was actually had his back towards the qibla when he was using the restroom so then it comes to the ikhtilaf of ulama and this is very important for us to look at these the the scholarly differences related to this hadith and that there is immense benefit for us in the uh, knowledge based discussion and opinions of the ulama a group of the ulama believe or hold the view that it is actually impermissible to face the Kaaba or turn one's back in every uh, while using the restroom in any time one is using the restroom in all uh, under all circumstances pertaining to using the restroom that it is impermissible and from these ulama that hold this uh, view and they use as evidence the hadith we mentioned in our last lesson the hadith of Abi Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu ta'ala anhu but those ulama that hold is from the tabi'een like Mujahid wa Nakha'i wa Thawri uh, and Ibn Hazm al-Zahiri 
Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah from the later generations and ibn al-Qayyum as well hold this view that it is impermissible during all circumstances to use the restroom and face the Qibla or turn one's back towards the Qibla. Another group of the ulama say that it is permissible during all circumstances. And from those uh, ulama, those scholars that hold this view is Urwa ibn Zubair, wa Rabi'a, wa Dawood al-Zahri. And they use as evidence the hadith we just mentioned, the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radi, radi Allah ta'ala anhu, where he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used the restroom and he had the Qibla towards his back. A third group of the ulama, and I believe this to be the most correct, and this is the opinion of Ali, uh, Shaykh Ali, Bas- Ali Bassam, Rahimullah Ta'ala, and, ke- and many of the ulama, like before him, those great imams like Imam uh, Malik, we Imam Shafi'i, we Imam Ahmed, Rahimahumullah Ta'ala, Jamian, Wa Ishaq, and also it is, uh, was related on Abdullah ibn Umar, and also a Sha'bi. A Sha'bi as well and they have details regarding this issue that the details are as follows that if a person is inside a building then it is permissible to face or turn one's back towards the Kaaba when using the restroom that there's a a wall in between them and the direction of the Qibla. And of course this is the case in most of our uh, situations today is that we uh, use restrooms that are inside or indoors or even outhouses. But during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they just went to a place, an open place maybe in the desert or wherever they could find where they could kind of seclude themselves and the Prophet ﷺ used to carry a stick and also try to use something to make a sitra or a, uh, something in between him so no one could see him and he والسلام, would use the restroom under those circumstances but now because we generally tend to be indoors but sometimes maybe you're camping or you're outdoors uh, you you want to observe those manners by being secluded and try not to face the Qibla if you can help it and so this is why the tafsil, the details that Imam Malik or Imam Shafi'i or Imam, Imam Ahmed or Ishaq and other than them that their view is that there are details with this issue and the details are that if as long as there is a wall or there is something between you and the Qibla then it is permissible to use the restroom in those circumstances. Uh, another, la- uh, so so what we learn from this hadith in general, uh, this hadith shows us that it is permissible to turn one's back or face the Qibla when there's a wall between you or you're indoors and you need to use the restroom. Another benefit that we gain from this hadith is, or we gain especially from the ikhtilaf of ulama, is that we see the uh, mercy and the knowledge of the scholars that they of course didn't curse one another for these differences in opinion regarding the same two ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They didn't accuse one another of uh, each other of bid'ah or this and that and the other, but rather those differences they respected and they refuted it with knowledge. So that doesn't mean that everyone is correct, no. So that's another thing, a misconception that we have to try to deal with, is that when we have differences of opinion on many issues in fiqh and what have you, that does not mean that every, uh, whichever imam you follow is okay and that, and that the opinion is correct, no. But we are required, if we have the ability, to do research in that. And we are required to follow the imam that has the most uh, adilla, to follow the most strongest evidence in accordance with Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala Alihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallam